To understand a battery is to dig through the steaming pile of marketing on top. Longer, faster, conqueror of ice ages, curer of global warming. Let's test that. Each of these 12 volt batteries contains nine amp hours of energy. Each could be fitted to the same late model motorcycle, but each is different. Parts Unlimited offers a conventional battery. The convention, now 150 years old, is to flood lead plates with acid, a cheap method that cost me 40 bucks, another five in sulfuric juice, and 3,153 grams. For $15 more, I get an AGM battery. Same principle, except the acid is absorbed in spongy fiberglass sheets between electrodes. So I can ship this with the acid already sealed inside, and that doesn't make me a mail bomber. I can also crash without spilling sulfuric acid onto my crotch. Thank you very much, absorbent glass mat. 2,960 grams. For 130 bucks, Bike Master will sprinkle some silica into the battery to gelatinize the acid. So gel batteries are also spill-proof, but without needing to wear furry fiberglass underwear like an AGM. This should be cooler in hot weather, though slightly heavier, 3,025 grams. Finally, you can get a lithium battery for $150. Shorai is our only contestant to completely abandon lead acid chemistry. Lithium iron phosphate is five times lighter, it's 609 grams, and half the size. While some of the other contestants can be mounted sideways, lithium is also the only one that can be stuck upside down. Why would anyone do that? First, we test voltage seg. As your starter draws current, the battery voltage begins to drop, and as in puberty, some drop is normal. But you don't want it to sag too much, because eventually, you won't have enough voltage to start the bike. While these batteries are as new as possible, I'll minimize manufacturing date discrepancies by fully charging each with the same charger. Usually lithium cells require a different unit because the high voltage desulfation stage of lead acid charging can cook lie batteries, but I found this Battery Tender Junior 800, which does flooded lead acid, AGM, gel, and lithium batteries. Hmm. One charger, one less variable. I run a light to skim the surface charge off each battery, then force each current through a bunch of resistors. Voltage is recorded after 15 seconds of load. I then freeze my batteries so we can repeat the test cold, because Canada. Our conventional battery sagged the most. 11.22 volts warm, 10.43 cold. That's unsurprising. See, so electrode plates need to be strong enough to stand up, so you can't use pure lead. It's too soft. You need an alloy. An alloy is less effective. The AGM battery did better, 11.40 warm and 10.58 volts cold. Because the electrodes are wrapped in a fiberglass burrito, they're insulated from the cold and also structurally supported, so you can use damn near pure, efficient lead. Our gel battery did even better at room temperature, but slightly worse in the cold, probably because gel stiffens when chilly, increasing internal resistance. And the lithium battery was okay, considering how tiny it is. Clinging to 11.29 volts warm, I was only able to coax 9.75 from it cold. But you gotta know what you're doing with cold lithium. For one, these bears hibernate in winter. You must wake them up with 30 seconds of headlight action before hitting the starter. And two, never charge a lithium battery below zero degrees Celsius. At that temperature, instead of intercalating into the anode, the ions start to plate it, forming dendrites, spiky dendrites that can pierce the membrane to the cathode, and poof, small short, big fire. Oh, wow, holy crap! <laughs> anyway, the ability for a battery to avoid voltage sag while cranking out amps is abbreviated CA, or CCA for cold cranking amps. Rather suspiciously, our batteries boast CCA numbers that perfectly match their price points. 
Now our test was not calibrated to industry standards because that would mean using a different load according to each battery's CCA rating, which would screw up our real world comparison. So while not CCA numbers, our results do indicate how each battery would crank on an actual starter. Next, we test recharge speed. These 100 watt light bulbs on our 12 volt batteries will take about 8.3 amps, and we're going to draw on them for 15 minutes. So we conclude that, oh, we'll draw 2.1 amp hours or so out of each of these 9 amp hour batteries. But more shockingly, we conclude that high school science is actually good for something. This is the electric octopus, a danger you should avoid in your home. Immediately onto the charger, we count how long it takes to put two amp hours and change back into these cells. While we wait, I'll explain why I drained them to a 25% depth of discharge. You see, it would be unfair to drain our cheapest contestant any further. The lead plates in a flooded lead acid battery sulfate. When significantly discharged, crystals building up that tend to stick around and permanently decrease the battery's capacity. Absorbent glass mat and gel batteries have this problem to a lesser extent, though they still prefer to be stored charged. And lithium, rather apropos, has no mood swings whatsoever. Forget it for eight months, charge it up, forget it again. It just doesn't care. Aha! The conventional battery reloads in 125 minutes. AGM is a little faster at 118, gel quicker yet at 112, and lithium... Oh. Well, that's disappointing. Our battery tender is smart. It dumps more or less oomph based on the capability it senses in each battery. And lithium is usually famous for being able to take whatever you can throw at it. Hence Elon's hard on for fast charging lithium, but not the case here. With our batteries freshly zesty, I place them on the shelf and think existential thoughts. Two months. Seriously, I gave our contestants 60 days to do nothing but approach death. Omnia Vanitas. Ah! With vital results. But how dead are they? The conventional battery lost 0.23 volts, considered a 20% state of discharge and perfectly normal for flooded lead acids. AGM leaked 0.35 volts, poor, gel lost 0.25 to the ether, and lithium dropped a mere 0.07 volts. We are comparing apples to oranges to plums to prunes, because each starts with a different open circuit voltage and a different scale of discharge, but it's still clear that lithium stores best. For all the others, I'd want a trickle charger through winter. Now, our results here confirm a well-known phenomenon. Lithium reaches a wonderfully slow self-discharge for most of its withering. Gel, to a lesser extent, and the rest go more linearly. So when it comes to thumbing that 12-volt starter after a nine-month Canadian winter, no, maybe, but probably only lithium is still going to do it. <clears throat> lithium may dominate our storage test, but the final challenge will flip that. Outright capacity. Taming the might of electricity until it's as safe as this little kitten. See, Shorai labels this a 9 amp hour PBEQ, the equivalent of a lead acid 9 amp hour battery. Unfortunately, they do some weird mental maneuvers to hit that number, saying, well, our batteries don't damage under deep discharge, so you can use more of them, and there's a third of the internal resistance, so they pump more amps under cranking load. So yeah, this is kind of like a 9 amp hour lead battery, even though it's only technically three amp hours. Ooh. Our familiar 8.3 amp light bulbs should take just over an hour to drain these 9 amp hour batteries. Of course, the lead acids will struggle with that rate of discharge. It's faster than what the manufacturers use to test their capacity. Lithium will be fine with the rate, but we know there ain't 9 amp hours in this to begin with. It's kind of a crapshoot test. But leaving your headlight on is real world relevant, so I'm keen to see how this suicide mission goes. 
suicide. Because to bleed the entire capacity out of a battery is to kill it. Posthumously, flooded lead acid proved the most heroic capacity, shortly followed by gel and AGM. The lithium equivalents are not at all equivalent. But recall that lithium had the slowest sitting discharge, gel the fastest recharge time, and AGM the smallest voltage sag. So each contestant took one test. Weird. We can add a couple more rankings. Weight, lithium is by far the lightest burden. AGM and gel, only a couple grams apart. Flooded lead acid, though, is the heaviest and must be mounted in only one orientation. Then ease of use. Conventional sucks. You gotta top it up with distilled water every month, or so they say, and clean corrosion off the terminals. AGM and gel only need the usual trickle charger after a couple months. Lithium, though, is truly maintenance-free aside from requiring a careful hand in cold weather. All that for naught, but three points between them. So why spend more? Flooded lead acids are cheap as rocks and basic to build. And companies like Parts Canada can easily acquire identical batteries to fancy brand names like UASA, only to turn around and undercut the price by 40%. All righty then. Thanks for watching. Electricity, play it safe. <laughs> I wonder why they put that sort of commercial on at this time of the morning. Nobody's going to take any notice. Anyway, it's all a load of rubbish. And it must have cost thousands. So to use that money to reduce our bill would have been a damn sight better. Well, time to be off. <laughs> <laughs>